back. My name is Satyajit Sahu and I am today in a new channel, right? So, आपका स्वागत है हमारे हिंदी चैनल पे, ओके? So, आप लोगों को पता होगा कि हमारा इंग्लिश और हिंदी चैनल for civil and mechanical merge हो गया है, right? So, both the channels of civil and mechanical have merged. So, now on this particular channel there will be lectures in Hindi also. And then there will be lectures in English also for civil and mechanical. And you might be knowing me. My name is Satyajit Sahu. I have done my B.Tech and M.Tech, both from IIT Khadakpur. I have also got a very good rank in GATE. And I was selected into many of the PSUs like Indian Oil, HPCL, Rights and DMRC. I have been associated with Baijus for the last two years. Okay. And I was taking lectures in English in the English YouTube channel. But from 13th of November, we are merging the channels, not language wise, but branch wise. So this particular channel, ये जो आपका channel है, जो हिंदी में था, अब both Hindi और English दोनों में होने वाला है, but यहाँ पे सिर्फ lectures किन departments की होंगी, civil और mechanical की होंगी, okay? So हम welcome करते हैं Juhi, Nevedya, Samriddhi, Swapnil, Lakshmi, okay? So welcome everyone. So welcome करते हैं सबको and let us start the session. This session will be in English and in between I might use some Hindi words, okay, for your convenience if you want. But the lecture will be prominently in what? In English. To tell you that on this particular channel now there will be lectures both on English and Hindi, okay. So many students requested sir to take this topic on singly reinforced beam, okay. So we'll be solving the ten questions of singly reinforced beam which they can ask in the examination. So good evening, be smart. Good evening, Raju Singh. Okay, warm welcome to both of you and other participant also. Okay, let us start the lecture. So when we are discussing about singly reinforced beams, first of all, let us see that in a singly reinforced beam, what all things are there. So this is a singly reinforced beam. Okay, now you will say that, sir, actually here, Steel is present on both sides, right? Now we know that whenever there is bending, right? And whenever there is sagging moment, okay? Whenever there is sagging moment, then what will happen? Above the neutral axis, there is compression and below the neutral axis, there is what? Tension, right? So whenever there is bending, what happens? Above the neutral axis, you see, suppose we have bending of a beam like this. Okay, we have bending of a beam like this, right? And this is the neutral axis. And this is the neutral axis, right? So above the neutral axis, you are seeing what? You are seeing compression. Above the neutral axis, there is what? Compression. And below this is what? Below we have tension, right? So now in a singly reinforced beam, yes, we can see on the tension side, right? We can see on the tension side, we have what? Steel provided, right? And this steel is known as what? This steel is known as what? Tension steel. This steel is known as what? Tension steel, I can say what? Tensile steel. We call that as what? Tensile steel. So below neutral axis, there is tension, and that tension is taken by what? Steel. Okay, therefore known as what? Your tension or tensile steel. Now, Above the neutral axis, there is what? There is compression. Yes. Above the neutral axis, there is compression. And this compression is taken by whom? It is taken by concrete. So why we have these two steel bars here? Okay. In a singly reinforced beam, steel is only present in the tension style side. Right. So why we are providing these two steel? These two steel bars are known as what? Hanger bars. They are what? They are hanger bars. They are not taking the compression. The compression is taken by whom? Concrete only. They are hanger bars to hold what? To hold the stirrups, right? They are the hanger bars to hold the stirrups. Now stirrups are provided for what? They are provided for sear. So I can say these are the parts of a singly reinforced beam. Right? These are what? The parts of a singly reinforced beam. Now let us you know, explore more. Okay, let us explore more. Okay, so a beam, a rectangular beam, mostly in single reinforced beam, what? We discuss what? Rectangular beams. We discussed what? Rectangular beams. Okay, 
so rectangular beams will have what rectangular beams will have a width so this is what b this b is what this will be the width of the rectangular beam so what is this b b is the width of rectangular beam okay width of rectangular beams uh, they can take compression but we are not designing considering them in the calculation of your compression see they can take obviously they will take some compression because they are in the compression side right since they are in the compression side they can take some compression but when we are designing the beam we are not designing considering the compression taken by them understood we design single reinforced beam considering that all the compression will be taken by what the concrete only yes understood so b is what width of rectangular beam okay, this is the width okay now next is the total depth or gross depth next is what next is the total depth or the gross depth this is what total depth capital d is what total depth it is the total depth just the next parameter is what the next parameter is effective depth the next parameter is effective depth now what is effective depth you see this is the tension steel right you see this is the tension steel right yes this is the tension steel okay so this will be the centroid of tension steel right this will be centroid of tensile steel because there is three bars suppose there can be more bars okay just an example three bars are there so this is what the centroid of tension steel so this dimension from the top to what the centroid of tension steel is known as what effective depth it is what the effective depth so obviously the effective depth will be less than what it will be less than the total depth right obviously the effective depth will be less than the total depth and this is known as what the effective cover this is known as what the effective cover and i can say i can say from this particular diagram that your effective depth is what it is total depth minus what the effective cover it is what the total depth minus the effective cover i can say yes yes now the steel which you are using the steel you are using will have some area right and that area is known as what ast ast now how to you know remember this name a for what area of what it is tension steel na so t for tensile and s for what steel so area of tensile steel ast now you can easily find out area of tension steel tension steel right suppose i am telling you know there are three you know 20 mm bars okay suppose these three bars are 20 mm now how to find out the ast very easy how to find out ast can i say the ast will be how much the ast will be for one bar what will be the area it's a circular bar right so pi by 4 into diameter square and then three such bars are there so what three so how much are getting this value tell me calculate and tell me okay calculate and tell me how much are getting this value come on everyone please pick your calculators okay and then you know tell me what is the value you are getting i am getting how much 942.47 942.47 mm square yes so if i give you the bars dimensions of bars and number of bars you can easily find out what the area of steel area of tensile steel so in the examination they will be giving what all these things will be given to you so first we'll discuss what what all things will be given to you they will be giving you what the area of tension steel directly they might give you or they might give you what the number of bars and the diameter of the bars if they give you the number of bars and diameter of bars you can easily find out what the area of steel yes tension steel now they will be giving you the grade of steel okay they will be giving you the grade of steel suppose i am mentioning fe415 suppose i am mentioning what fe415 or fe250 or fe500 or fe550 what are these numbers these numbers indicate what they are the grade of steel is indicate what the yield stress of that particular 
steel which you have used. This indicates what? The yield stress Fy. And that will also be given to you in the question, right? The Fy will be given to you in the question, right? How much Fy it is? Yes. So they will be giving you the area of steel, the grade of steel. What else they will give you? They will give you the grade of concrete. They will be giving you what? The grade of concrete. And grade of concrete is known as what? FCK. It is known as what? FCK. For example, if I say M25 concrete, when I say M25 concrete, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is your FCK is equal to 25 Newton per meter mm square. Yes, this is the meaning, right? It's the grade of concrete, right? So all these things will be given to in the examination. So what all things will be given? They will be giving the width, the effective depth, or if they give you total depth and the effective cover, you can find out effective depth, right? So all these things will be given. The width will be given, the effective depth will be given, right? The area of steel will be given, right? Then the FCK will be given, right? Yes, then the FY also will be given. Okay, FCK and FY they can give indirectly, right? For example, if I say FE415 steel and M30 concrete, for example, if they mention like this, then I can say what? I can say that in this case, the FY will be equal to 450 Newton per mm square and FCK will be equal to 30 Newton per mm square. Okay, so these are the things given in the question. So what all things they will ask you? They will ask you many things. So that th one one thing we will see. Now we are not going to derive the derivation of the formulas here because obviously I cannot derive, you know, all the formulas here. So how to know the derivation of the formulas? Yes, I'll be discussing each formula. Okay, I'll be discussing each formula, but how to know the derivation of the formulas? So derivation of all these formulas I have done and they are mentioned not mentioned, they are, you know, they are where? They are in the Baiju's exam prep official app. So if you download the Baiju's exam prep official app, there you can go to learn with video lessons and there you will find all these derivations. So today we will not be doing the derivation, we will be directly seeing the formulas, what all things they can ask and which formula we will use to solve these numericals which are asked in the gate examination, right? Let us start solving. So first question is, first thing they will ask is what? Total compression force in the section. Now see, if this is the rectangular cross section, yes? So here we have the tension steel, yes? Here we have what? The tension steel, right? And this is the nodal axis, suppose, this is the nodal axis. This is what? The nodal axis, yes? So above the nodal axis there is what? The compression stress, compressive stresses are there, right? The compressive stresses are there, right? And the compressive stresses will have certain distribution. They will have a distribution something like this, okay? Now we are not discussing distribution now, okay? They will be having a distribution something like this. Now what will happen? This distribution will lead to a total force, right? And that total force is what? The total compression force. So directly they will ask you to find out what? Total compression force and what is the formula for that? The formula is 0.36, FCK is what? The grade of concrete, okay, into XU into B. So this is what? This is the total compressive force. Okay, some other video will derive it, okay. Or if you want to see the derivation, they're available where? They're available in the app. You can go and see the derivations also. But here we'll discuss only the formulas, right? Then we have the total tension force. The total tension force, okay, it will be acting where? It will be acting in the steel, right? So it will be acting at the level of steel because tension is acting where? In the steel, yes? It is total tension force. This total tension force. This total tension force T is 0.87 Fy into AST. It is what? 0.87 Fy into AST. Then next one is lever arm Z. What is this lever arm? Lever arm is the distance between the total compression force and the total tension force. This distance. This is what? The lever arm. This is what? The lever arm. Yes. And this lever arm, Z, is what? Can what I can say? It is the distance between the total compression force and the total tension force. And this is how much? This is T minus 0.42 XU. How? Very easy. 
you see this is d this is what d right and this is what this is distance at which compression force is acting and this distance is 0 0.42 xu okay now you might be thinking what is xu sir xu is the depth of neutral axis you see if i erase everything here i don't want to erase this this is the neutral axis right neutral axis so this is what this is the depth of neutral axis now many students also know this right all the students who are revising this lecture they know this thing yes this is what x u depth of neutral axis easy okay this is easy okay so d minus 0.42 x u so this is c this is t and this is what the lever arm z so directly they can ask you these things we'll see okay next thing what they can ask is your depth of neutral axis how to find out this depth of neutral axis instead of remembering the formula remember the principle the principle to find out depth of neutral axis is in this particular cross section i can say that the total compression force will be equal to what the total tension force for equilibrium condition right for equilibrium i can say this total compression force will be equal to what total tension force i can say the equation will be c is equal to t yes so just remember c is equal to t you know c you know t right so just equate them c is what 0.36 fck xu into b and what is t t is 0.87 fya into ast right so from here i can find out xu is equal to your 0.87 fy ast divided by what divided by your 0.36 fck into b so this will be what the formula to find out what the depth of neutral axis now tell me which one is better approach for you to remember this formula or just remember this concept that c is equal to t see anyhow you have remembered what c is equal to 0.36 fck into xu into b right you have remembered t is equal to something you have to remember obviously you know everything you can't just you know find logically also okay something you have to remember but everything you should not be remembering okay so if you know c is this if you know t is this just equate c is equal to t and rest equation you can write down in the examination itself smart approach smart approach okay the next thing the limiting depth of neutral axis that is what x u limiting what is this limiting depth of neutral axis and this limiting depth of neutral axis is equal to how much a constant k into d okay a constant k into d what is this d this is the effective depth right now how to find out the k for that you need to remember one formula so x u limiting the limiting depth of neutral axis means what the depth of neutral axis has to be limited within this particular value if it crosses this particular value the beam will be over reinforced right so if x u is less than x u limiting beam is what under reinforced okay we know this okay we know this thing right and then when x u is equal to x u limiting we call that as what balance section right and then when x u is greater than x u limiting we call that as what your over reinforced section we call that as what over reinforced section now how to find out see we are finding this by comparing what your x u and x u limiting we are finding this by comparing what by finding x u x u limiting x u we understood how to find out c is equal to t now how to find out x u limiting that is simply k into d where k is how much your k equation you have to remember this is 0 0.0035 divided by what 0.87 fy by es plus 0 0.0055 okay now this equation become little difficult but it can be you know easy see this es is what it is the modulus of elasticity of steel it is what it is the modulus of elasticity of your reinforced steel which you are using and modulus of elasticity of steel is how much it is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square yes this value if you remember now you can put in this equation right k equation so what will happen to k k will be you see 0 0.0035 okay divided by what 0.87 fy 
by ES plus what? 0 0.0055. So what I will do? I will multiply ES in the numerator and multiply ES in the denominator. When I do this, what will happen? In the numerator, what will be become? 0 0.0035 into 2 into 10 to the power 5, right? And denominator will become how much? You see, when you multiply this, open the bracket, ES, ES will get cancelled. I will get what? Just 0.87FY plus 0 0.0055 into 2 into 10 to the power 5. So when you find out this value, this value will be how much? Numerator will get 700. Denominator will get how much? 0.87FY. And this you will get 1100. So I can say this is easier form to remember K, right? It is easier form to remember K. Now you can see that this K is depending only on FY, no? Only on FY, right? So if I take FE 250, for FE 250, what is FY? 250, right? So what is the value of K you are getting? Can you tell me? What is the value of K you are getting for FE 250? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Yes, just put the FY is equal to 250, what will happen? So it is 0 0.87 into 250, okay? I'll add 1100, okay? And I divide this from where? From your 700. So how much I'm getting? I'm getting a value of 0 0.53, right? I'm getting a value of what? 0 0.53. And then for FE 415, when I do the FE 415, what you will do in place of FY? You'll put 415. So what will become? I can say 0 0.87 into 415 plus 1100 okay and I divide this from 700 so how much I'm getting I'm getting a value of 0.48 I'm getting a value of what 0.48 yes I'm getting a value of 0.48 okay and then if I take for FE 500 if I take for FE 500 how much I will get I will get the same value as 0.46 calculate you can find out 0.46 so in this manner you can find out what your XU limiting, yes. So first we understood how to find out XU, very easy. Yes, C is equal to T. And then we understood how to find out XU limiting, how? Simply K into D, yes. Now you see, here, you see this C is equal to T, right? Yes, you see this is the cross section, suppose. We are getting, you know, a compressive force and we are getting a tensile force. Right? And this C is equal to T. That means what? They are generating a couple, right? They are generating a couple. And every couple will have what? A particular moment, right? So what is the moment generated? If you see the moment generated will be how much? Can I say the moment generated will be how much? Either it can be C into Z or I can say T into Z, right? Either it can be C into Z or it can be what? T into Z. It's couple, right? Couple. How you find out the uh, moment of a couple? Force into lever arm, yes, force into lever arm, yes, and this moment is known as what? The moment of resistance. Now tell me, is there any requirement to remember the formula for moment of resistance? No. Why? Because you know it is simply C into Z or T into Z, right? So if I ask you to find out the formula for moment of resistance, that is MOR, no need to remember any formula. Ha, you have to remember C and Z, right? Remember C and Z. And Z is how much? Lever arm is D minus 0 0.42. So if you just know your C and Z and T and Z, I can find out C into Z. Okay, I can find out this manner. So the formula become how much? 0.36 FCK XU into B, then D minus 0 0.42 XU, right? And then it will become T into Z if I'm going from tension side. It will become how much? 0.87 Okay, FY, AST, D minus 0.42 XU. No need to remember the formula for what? C, this uh, MOR. If you know C, if you know Z, then easily you can find out the answer. Easily you can find out the answer. Okay, very good, easy, right, no problem. Yes, let us solve some questions then. Let us solve some questions then. Okay, so first question is in front of your screen. So I'll expect you to find out this answer. Depth of nodal axis. I told now we will solve 10 questions. The first question is to find out the depth of nodal axis. Simply they will give the data. Read, let us read, read the data and find out depth of nodal axis. You see what is given are 300 into 400 mm effective depth. That means they have directly given the effective depth. So this B is given as 300 mm. Very good. 
okay the defective test means what from top to the center of this tension steel so this is what this i can say is your how much this is your 400 ml this is what 400 ml yes okay so b is given and effective depth is given and reinforced with three bars of 20 mm dia so can i find out ast yes i can find out ast you have found out this right three mm three bars of 20 mm dia how much we got we got some 942 point something right we got some 942 point something right how much we got 942 how much we got 942.5 almost right i got 942.5 yes yes i got 942.5 okay so 942.5 i can say is the ast then m20 is given that means what fck is simply 20 newton per mm square and your fe415 steel is given that means what your fy is equal to 415 newton per mm square so your fck and fy are given so depth of neutral axis is asked so what i told how to remember the formula when students have found out also very good swapnil so, niki and juhi very good so c is equal to t what we will do we will do c is equal to t no need to remember other formula you remember c remember t and from here i can say 0.36 fck xu into b is equal to what 0.87 fy into ast okay instead of remembering the formula of xu right remember this so x will be equal to i can say you see 0.87 fy is how much it is 415 ast is how much it is 942.5 yes and then divide by what your 0.36 fck is how much 20 and b is how much 300 so if you solve this you will get how much as many students have what it is 157.5 the first type of question they can ask in the gate examination is simply this much only see it's a major misconception among many students that in rcc or steel structure they will be asking you lengthy lengthy questions <laughs> because you know they study in the colleges in colleges what happens in colleges the approach is different i will not say that college approach is wrong that's a different examination there you know the your knowledge is built here your knowledge is checked right your knowledge is checked see suppose you are cooking a food okay and some you know chef is there he is testing the food while cooking the food it might happen you know you will follow a very elaborate process right you will follow a very elaborate process to cook the food while you know checking the food do you know you, you follow the exact method of cooking no you just check it right just check it okay you just you know pick some food items and check it yes so in the gate examination they are going to check your knowledge in a short time so they won't be asking you lengthy questions they will be asking you short questions conceptual questions okay like this like this they will be asking you short question conceptual questions okay it's a beginning obviously so many teachers do this you know they apply a very long approach for solving the questions of rcc and steel and students think that in rcc and steel in rcc and steel one has to solve lengthy questions design lengthy lengthy five page four page no 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 in gate examination they will be asking you such questions only they will be asking you straight forward to the point questions and if you are good in that you can score very good in steel and concrete structures and even in structural analysis in strength of material all the structure subjects you can score good if you are following the topics in a very structured manner okay so don't leave steel and structural analysis for your gate examination it is not a wise advice don't leave rcc don't leave geotech don't leave environment engineering don't leave any chop topic yes cover the basics of all the subjects all the chapters yes i can say that you can leave some sub topics some you know few points but don't dare to leave any subject see i will suggest don't leave chapters also i can't dare to leave tell you that no leave you know uh, all together subjects don't leave any subject every subject can be studied in a very structured way and you can get good marks also so this is the first thing we have studied the first question yes that is the next question next question is what question number 2 the limiting depth of neutral axis 
Come on, find out this answer. X will limiting. Come on, you find out. Let us see. Find out X will limiting. How much X will limiting? Tell me. Formula we know K into D. Formula is what? K into D. Now tell me what value of K I will use here. Okay, many students have found out also very good. So how, what value of K I will use here? Tell me. What's the value of K? This K depends only on what? FY, remember. This K depends only on FY. So FY is how much? 415 steel. So for, for 415, okay. So for 415, what will happen? For 415, FY is how much? 415. And what is the value of K then? What is the value of K then? Tell me. What is the value of K? 0.48. Very good. Okay. So in upcoming times, I will be conducting a lot of sessions on RCC, steel, structural analysis, environment engineering, geotech, surveying, CPM part, then hydrology, irrigation, and many other topics. So we are going to cover a lot of topics. So please stay tuned. And for the next two, three months, try to follow the lectures. You will be immensely benefited for your upcoming gate examination. Okay. So if you have any queries and all, you can always mention in the comment section. If you have any doubts, if you want some topic to be taken, you can mention in the comment section. Okay. We will address that. Okay. Very good. So K is how much? 0.48 and D is how much? D is 400. Same question. Data is same. Just, you know, they're asking for the same question, different parameters. So 400, how much I'm getting? 192. Now, can you tell me it's a which type of beam? It's under reinforced or over reinforced or it's a balanced beam? Can you tell me? It's a which kind of beam? Can you can you, can you tell me in the comment section? Which kind of beam this is? This is which kind of beam? Tell me. Which kind of beam? Over reinforced, under reinforced, balanced. I've told you how to judge the question, right? How to judge which kind of beam? It is under reinforced. Very good. Wow, we'll judge, able to judge because you found out XU, you found out XU limiting, right? And your XU was 157 point something, right? It was 157.54 and XU limiting is 192. So when your XU is less than XU limiting, it is known as what? Under reinforced beam. So there can be a two mark question where they're asking you, this beam is V type of beam. Is it under reinforced or you know over reinforced or balance section. So how to judge? You have to first find out the XU, you have to find out XU limiting and then you have to judge based on their relative values. Go to the next question, question number three. The moment of resistance. How to find out moment of resistance? I have just told, right? Either you can go by C into Z or you can go by T into Z. Okay? So put the values and give me the MOR, right? You have got, see the same question, same question, values are same, just different, different things are asked. That means what? You will use XU, XU is what? 157 point, how much it is? 54. So use this value and find out what? The MOR. That means what? In order to finding MOR, in order to find what? MOR, you have to first find out XU, right? <laughs> yes, you have to first find out XU then only you can find out MOR. If you don't know how to find XU, then you cannot find what MOR. Yes. Therefore, this order I followed for teaching you the MOR. Find out, tell me, what is the value? So C, I can take 0.36, FCK, XU into B. Then Z is what? D minus 0.42 XU. Right? And TZ, T is what? 0.87 FY, AST D minus 0.42 XU. So you follow any formula, you'll get the same value. So I found 140. Let us see other students have found out or not. See, this is what 0.36. FCK is how much? It is M20. So 20. XU got 157.54. B is how much? B we got is 300. Yes. Then D. D minus how much? 0.42. XU is how much? XU is 157.54. Now this answer you will get in what? Newton mm. How? You see this FCK is what? FCK is Newton per mm square. XV is what? Mm. B is what? Mm. And this D minus 0.42 X. So mm, right? Yes. So mm. So what will happen? You see? You get the answer in Newton mm. If I want to find out the answer in kilonewton meter, what I will do? This D is by the way 400. What I will do? I will simply divide by 10 to the power 6. 
So how much are getting? H for many students, we are getting almost what? 113.6 kilo newton meter. 113.6 kilo newton meter. Understood? Now same thing we should do from you know, tension also, T into. So we also get the same value. Okay. So whatever approach you apply, you will get the same value. Now somebody might tell, sir, I better go by the tension side because you know this tension doesn't have you know X U term. But liver harm has na. <laughs> liver har arm has X U term. So can you tell me tell me can I find out the can I find out the uh, M O R without finding X U? Tell me. Can I find out M O R without finding your X U? Can you tell me? Can we do that? Can we do that? Tell me. No, not possible. Not possible. So MOR means first you have to find out XU. MOR means first you have to find XU, then only you can find out MOR. Okay, remember this. Okay, so we can say XU is the prerequisite of what? Finding MOR. Okay, let us go to the next thing. The next thing which they can ask in the examination is what? The limiting moment of register. That is what? MOR limiting. So how to find out MOR limiting? That is also very easy. That is also very easy. How to find MOR limiting? Very easy. Yes. See, MOR equation is what? MOR equation is equal to C into Z, right? Yes. So if you want to find out the MOR in limiting condition, limiting condition is what? What is limiting condition? Limiting condition is when XU is equal to XU limiting, right? So in that case, I will get what? MOR is equal to MOR limiting. So what you can do? You can find out C limiting, you can multiply with Z limiting, you will get what? Your MOR limiting. Now many students will be thinking, sir, how, what are you writing? Let me explain to you. So you see, MOR is what? What is MOR? MOR is 0.36. If I go from compression side, it's C into Z, right? If I take C into Z, what will happen? If I take C into Z, what will happen? 0.36 FCK XU Yes, B, then D minus 0.42 XU. Right, this is the formula. This is the formula. Now see, FCK belongs to the grade of concrete. That will be fixed. Yes, once you have chosen the grade of concrete, fixed. B and D are dimensions, they will be fixed. Right? So, in limiting condition, what will happen? This XU will become what? XU limiting. This will become what? XU limiting. So what happened? This C, this is C, na. This C is becoming what? C limiting. Yes. Means basically, what is limiting condition? When the depth of neutral axis is equal to what? The limiting depth of neutral axis. Easy. Yes. And then this also what? Z we have this X limiting. This becomes Z limiting and this is what? MOR limiting. Very easy. Very easy. Now I'll do some you know small changes. You know change this equation form. I'll do some small changes and change this equation form. You see what I will do? I will take this as 0.36 FCK. In this x u limiting by I will divide by d multiply d. I can do that. Yes. Then b. Okay. Then what I will do? I will take this d outside. When I take this d outside, I will get this d 1 minus 0.42 x u limiting by d. Everybody understood what I did? What I did? Everybody understood this or not? Tell me. Yes. I just again will explain this. I divided here x u limiting by d. Then multiplied by d. I write down this in red. So that it is, you know, highlighted. This is D, this is D. Yes. Then I took this D outside. So I took this D outside. So I will divide this by D. Yes, easy. Now tell me, what is this term? Tell me, what is this term? X to limiting by D. What is this term? Tell me. What is this X to limiting by D? We just saw, right? What is this X to limiting by D? Tell me. What is this X to limiting by D? What is this X to limiting by D? Tell me. Ah, that is K, yes, because what was XU limiting? XU limiting was equal to K into D, right? So when you are taking by D, you will get what? You will get K, you will get what? K. So this is equal to, I can say, 0 0.36 FCK into K. Then this is what? BD square, yes, 1 minus 0 0.42 into K, na. Yes or no, everybody? Everybody understood this or not? Yes. So now, 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 
in this equation for Fe 250, K will be how much? I will put 0.53. So when you put the value 0.53, you will get this direct equation as how much? Of MOR limiting, you will get 0.148 FCK VD square. Easy. See, put here K is equal to 0.53, right? Put here K is equal to 0 0.53 and you will get this equation directly FCK VD square in terms of what? FCK VD square. So when it is Fe 415, K is equal to 0.48, you directly get what? 0.138 FCK VD square. What you will do? You will put 0.48. Easy. Easy. And when it is Fe 500, K will be 0 0.46 and you'll get the value what? 0.133 FCK VD square. Now, if you remember these equations, then you can easily find out MOR limiting. So everybody understood how to find out MOR limiting using this equation. Or if you forget this equation, you can directly use the original equation now because these equations are coming from this original equation. Let us apply this and solve one question. Same question we'll solve. So see question number Four, the limiting moment of resistance means what? MOR limiting. They have asked for same question. MOR limiting. They have asked. So what you do with MOR limiting? Very easy. It is which? Fe four one five. For Fe four one five, if you see the formula of MOR limiting which we found, it was how much? It was 0.138 FCK into BD square, right? So this will be equal to 0.138 FCK is how much? 20 M20. B is how much? 300. How much is D? 400 square. So this will be Newton mm. What I will do? I'll divide by 10 to the power 6. So when I divide by 10 to the power 6, how much I'm getting? As per Swapnil and uh, Nikki Manan, we're getting 132.5 kilo Newton meter. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have remembered those three formulas, if you have remembered those three formulas, you can easily find out MOL. Yes. Or suppose you forgot. You forgot, sir. You told sir, I forgot, sir. Okay, I am unable to remember so many formulas. So simply, it is what? Nothing but C limiting into Z limiting. Write down the formula for what? C limiting. It is what? 0.36. FCK. X limiting. Then B. Then D minus 0.42. X limiting, right? So in the MOR equation, just put what? Just put X limiting. Now, X limiting we already got na, in the previous questions. How much we got? 192. Na? So, this is equal to 0.36. FCK is 20. XUB is, XU limiting is 192. B is 300. D is 400. Minus 0.42. And X limiting is how much? X limiting is again 192. Then divide by what? Divide by 10 to the power 6 to get the answer in kilo Newton meter. If you calculate this, you will get the same value. Yes, you get the same value. But if you apply this method to find out F, uh, MOR limiting, what will happen? If you are applying this method, you have to first find out X limiting. Na? You have to first find out X limiting and then you will put to find out what? Your MOR limiting. But if you remember these equations, these three equations which I told you, if you remember these three equations and you see that these three equations are similar equation, right? It is FCK BD square. Yes, it is FCK BD square. Only what is varying? Only what is varying? No, for 250 it is what? Uh, 0 0.148. For 415 it is 0 0.146, 1138. And then for uh, 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 this uh, 500 it is what? 0.133. Yes, yes. So if you remember these three equations, you can easily find out faster. Yes. So, but yes, if you forget the formula, then there should be some safety net, right? And that safety net is directly using what? C limiting into Z limiting. So we can say four type, four major things which they ask in the examination, we have already covered. Let's go to the next thing. <laughs> so the next thing. The fourth one they ask is what? So three, three, four things we saw. The fifth thing. Okay. So three things were what? First we saw how to find out XU. Then we saw how to find out XU limiting. Then we saw how to find out MOR. The next thing we saw is what? MOR limiting. Yes. We saw what? MOR limiting. Yes. Now, the next thing we'll see is what? Okay. So, how to find MOR limiting? 
simply take what c limiting into z limiting or i told three formulas right 0.148 fck bd square or 0.138 and 0.133 for different grades of steel the next thing we'll see is what your limiting area of tension steel that is what your ast limiting it is what your ast limiting now how to find out ast limiting the limiting area of tension steel. Now many students, you know, tell many formulas, okay. I will again tell you, remember the concept. The concept is what? Use the concept of C limiting is equal to T limiting. See, what is limiting condition I told? The limiting condition is the condition when XU is equal to XU limiting. So XU is equal to XU limiting. MOR is equal to MOR limiting, right? MOR is equal to MOR limiting and your AST also becomes what? Equal to AST limiting, na? It is a limiting condition. So if I use the condition C limiting is equal to T limiting, yes, what is the equation of C? C equation is 0.36 FCK XU into B, right? What is the equation of T? That is what? 0.87 FY into AST. Yes, this is the formula. This is C is equal to T. And limiting condition, what I will do? See, this is C is equal to T, right? This is equal to T. In limiting condition, what I will do? I will make this XU limiting. I will make this AST limiting. Game over. Yes, game over. Now you know how to find out XU limiting. So you can find out AST limiting, right? <laughs> so no need to remember any formula. No need to remember any formula, right? Just remember C is equal to T. And at limiting condition, what will happen? C limiting becomes equal to T limiting. So if I ask you same question, if I ask you same question now, the limiting area of tension steel, AST limiting. So can you find out and give me the value? AST limiting. What I told? Use the concept of C limiting is equal to T limiting. Right? And C limiting is how much? C limiting is 0.36 FCK in place of XU put what? XU limiting. Then B, that is equal to how much? 0.87 FY and then what? AST limiting. And I can find out this AST limiting, okay. I can find out this AST limiting, okay. How? Formula is there, easy. I can say AST limiting will be equal to, see, therefore it is important not to remember the formulas. Remember few formulas and smartly apply, okay. Remember few formulas and smartly apply to different conditions, yes. So this AST limiting will be how much? 0.36 FCK is how much? FCK is 20. What is XU limiting? We got right 192, right? Yes. And B is how much? B is 300. Divided by what? 0.87 FY is how much? 415. You see, by the same formula C is equal to T, I am able to find this by using some concepts. How much I am getting? 1148.6 mm square. Now you will see a very interesting thing. You see, I tell you a very interesting thing. You see, it was under enforced, right? It was under enforced, right? Yes. So what happened? You see, under enforced, XU came less than XU limiting now. Yes, XU came less than XU limiting. Now see, what was MOR? MOR was 113.6. And what was MOR limiting? It is 132.5. So what happened? Your MOR also your MOR also came less than MOR limiting because that is what is an under reinforced beam. If XU is less than XU limiting, MOR will be less than MOR limiting. And what was AST by the way? AST was 942 point something, right? 942.5. What is AST limiting here? We're getting 148.6. So I can say what? Your AST is also less than what? Your AST limiting, right? So I can say <laughs> for under reinforced beam, your XU will be less than XU limiting, right? Your MOR will be less than MOR limiting and your AST also will be less than your AST limiting. So it will follow the trend. It's not that, you know, under reinforced XU is becoming less than XU limiting. And if you're getting MOR more than MOR limiting, that means you have committed some mistake, right? That means you have committed some mistake. That means you have committed some mistake, which you should rectify, right? Rectify. Very good. Let us go to the next thing. Next, next thing is your percentage, your percentage, limiting percentage of tensile steel. 
This is also known as what? PT limiting. Also known as what? PT limiting. Now, how to find out PT limiting? Very easy. PT limiting is nothing but what? You have got AST limiting. This AST limiting divided by the effective area. The effective area will be BD, right? If you see a particular beam, right? If you see the particular beam, here we have the tension steel. Here we have the tension steel, right? So I can say the tension force is acting here. So this area is considered what? The effective area. The effective area will be what? B into D. So if you want to find out the percentage tension steel, or can say limiting percent of tension steel is what? AST limiting, yes. And then divide by the effective area BD into 100. So this is very easy, right? This is very easy, yes. So if you want to find out the limiting percent of tensile steel, directly you can find out AST limiting divided by BD into 100. So here you see, suppose I'm asking you this question, same question, that what is the limiting percentage of tensile steel? So PT limiting, you have already got your AST limiting, na? you have already got your AST limiting, how much? 1148.6. So it is 1148. 0.6 divided by B into D. So 300 into 400 into 100. So how much I'm getting this PT limiting? Tell me in the comment section. How much I'm getting this PT limiting? Tell me what's the answer. What is, uh, how much I'm getting PT limiting? How much I'm getting PT limiting? I'm getting 0 0.957 percentage. I'm getting 0.957 percentage. Yes, that means you see, in order to find out PT limiting, I have to first find AST limiting, yes, then divided by BD into 100, yes. So that means if I want to find out PT limiting, I have to find out AST limiting, no, not required. This is one of the process, there can be another process also. How? See, what is PT limiting I told? PT limiting I told, it is AST limiting by BD into 100. Now what is the expression for AST limiting? The expression for AST limiting you can find out from the C limiting is equal to T limiting, right? Yes. So C limiting is how much? C limiting is this, T limiting is this. Yes. So from this can I find out the expression for AST limiting? Can I say it will be equal to, yes see, I'll just bring it down. This is the expression for what? This is the expression for what? AST limiting, na? I can put this, yes. I can put this, this is 0.36 FCK XU limiting, right, into B divided by what? BD into 100, okay? And again, you see, denominator we have what? 0.87 FY, na? That will also come into picture, yes. You see, this is your AST limiting, right? This is AST limiting. Then I'm dividing by BD into 100, right? So when you divide, what is happening? You see this BB is getting cancelled, right? Yes, BB getting cancelled. Now what is this uh, XU limiting? This XU limiting is actually K into D, na? I can write, like, I can write down like this. So DD get cancelled. So what I'm getting the expression for PT limiting? The PT limiting I'm getting, you see 0 0.36 into 100 by 0 0.87. So if you do 0 0.36 into 100, 0.36 into 100 divided by 0.87. I'm getting how much? 41.38. I'm getting how much? 41.38. Yes, almost I can say. And then FCK by FY into K. Yes. This expression I'm getting right. Yes. So if you know this expression, you can find out PT limiting without even finding what? AST limiting. Let us see. You put this expression here, 41.38. What was FCK? FCK is 20 and FY is how much? 415 and K will be how much? K will be 0.48, right? Because it is our FE415 still. Yes. So how much I will get? I'll get 41.38 into 20 divided by 415 into 0.48. And I am getting the same value of what? 0.957 percentage, right? <laughs> yes, so tell me which is better approach to find out the limiting percentage of tensile steel? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, first find out AST limiting, divide by BD into 100. Suppose this is your approach 1 or directly use this formula approach 2. Which approach is better? Tell me. Which approach is better to find out the PT limiting? Second one is better, yes. But suppose you forget, 
suppose some student forgot you know that what was the formula it is 41 or 47 or 46 what you do no problem find out ht limiting divide by bd into 100 so i'm giving you both the alternatives right i'm giving you both the alternatives that if you forget the second formula go for the normal formula and find out that will be lengthy but at least it will be accurate if you have forgot the second formula yes easy let us go to the next thing the next thing which you can ask is what the minimum area of steel the minimum and maximum area of steel which can be used in a singly reinforced beam now the maximum area of steel remember it is how much i can say this is ast max it is ast max and this is equal to 4% of your gross area 4% of gross area means what 4% of gross area total area is how much total area is your see we have two areas in the singly reinforced beam we have two areas yes this is the effective area effective area will be b into d yes i can say the effective area will be the effective area will be b into d now what's the gross area what is the gross area the gross area will be capital b into capital b into sorry, small b into capital d means what total depth total depth so remember very important that when you are finding the maximum area of steel you have to take what gross area not the effective area so i can say this is what four percent of gross area will be how much b into capital d or i can say this is what 0 0.04 b into understood understood yes and then what about the minimum area of steel the minimum area of steel is 85 by fy percentage 85 by fy percentage of your effective area okay it is what 85 by fy percentage of your effective area right now 85 by fy percentage means what i can say this is equal to 85 by FY percentage means what? I have to divide by 100. Yes. 85 by FY percentage means what? I divide by 100 when I say 4% of this. So I, I did what? 4 by 100. So I'm telling 85 by FY percent means what? 85 by FY divided by 100. Now into effective area is how much? It is B into D, small B into D. So this is the thing. So I can say this formula is how much? You see? Point F85 by FY into BD. So everybody understood how to find out the minimum area of steel and the maximum area of steel easy <laughs> so now you see when you go to the question suppose they ask you a question right find out the minimum area of tension steel can you find out and tell me this answer tell me come on find out the minimum area of steel find out this answer and tell me minimum area of steel find out this answer and tell me Hmm. So it is what? 85 by FY percentage. I told, right? 85 by FY percentage of what? Effective area. So B into D. That is equal to 85 by FY. FY is how much? 415. Percentage means divided by 100. B is how much? 300. And D is your 400. You see, so easily we are able to find out by understanding simple concepts. So I am getting how much? 245.78 mm square. Now if I ask you find out the maximum area, find out this maximum area then, now find out maximum area, yes, find the maximum area. How much cover value oh, oh, oh it is effective depth now nah? okay okay so effective cover suppose i am telling 50 mm very good very good effective cover is suppose 50 mm yeah so from that total depth will be how much 400 plus 50 so how much it is 450 mm okay because this will be total effective depth so now tell me what is the answer uh -huh, very good very good very good 
find out this the effective cover will be given to the question here i forgot to mention find out now what is the answer 5400 very good so this is i can say point zero 0.04 here you will take the total so 300 into 450 so getting how much you're getting 5400 so in a single question ladies and gentlemen in a single question i have taught you eight prominent things of a singly reinforced beam which they can ask now you will tell me okay now you are going to tell me okay you are going to tell me how to find out xu you tell me tell me what is the principle don't tell me formula how to find out xu tell me how to find out xu you tell me i am not going to tell you the asking the formula tell me what, what's the principle you will use what the concept you will use tell me come on how to find out xu Ah, total compression force is equal to total tension force. Remember this much only. How to find out XU limiting? 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 Tell me. How to find out XU limiting? K, no, XU limiting, XU limiting. K into D. Simply K into D. Yes. And this K is how much? This K is for FE 250, it is 0 0.53. For 415, it is 0 0.48. For 500, it is 0 0.46. Now for any other grade, what is the formula? The formula is simply 700 by... 0.87 Fy plus 1100. This much you should remember, right? Yes. Now, how to find out MOR? Tell me. How to find out MOR? Tell me. How to find out MOR? How to find out MOR? Tell me. How to find out MOR? How to find out MOR? Chalo, chalo, jaldi, jaldi. Tell me, jaldi. No baj gya, kar chayenge. Go home. <laughs> C into Z or T into Z. Okay. And Z is a lever amam. Equation is what? D minus 0.42 XU. And obviously to find out MOR, you have to first get what? XU. Yes. Next thing is what? MOR limiting. MOR limiting directly you can use what? C limiting into Z limiting. If you have forgotten the formula. Or I told you three equations, right? 0.148 FCK into BD square, right? 0.138 and 0.133 FCK into BD square. This is for what? Your 250 steel, this is for 415 steel and this is for what? 500 steel. Or if you have forgotten this formula directly, you can use what? C limiting into Z limiting. Put the equation of C and Z with X is equal to X limiting. Yes, this is what I find what your MOR limiting. Okay. Now, how to get your AST limiting? How to get your AST limiting? What I told the principle? Principle is simply what? C limiting is equal to T limiting. And once you get the AST limiting, you can find out what? PT limiting using what? AST limiting by BD into 100. Or you can use direct formula also, which I derived. Direct formula also. 41.38 into FCK by FY into K. Right? And then the maximum and minimum area we saw, right? Then the maximum and minimum area we saw. In minimum area, we take the effective area. And then in maximum area, we take the gross area. Yes. So see, so many things we revise in a single lecture in one hour. Yes. <laughs> Next thing is, solve this question. Okay. Solve this question now. You see, here they have asked what? The ninth number of question, limiting depth of neutral axis. Now, limiting depth of neutral axis is what? Limiting depth of neutral axis is K into D. Here the effective depth is given 450. No problem. It is given 450 mm. But they have given what? FE 550 steel. They have given what? FE 550. Now we have remembered the value of K for FE 250, FE 415 and FE 500. Because most of the times they ask you these three grades only. But they might ask some other grade, right? If they ask some other grade, then just take that as a FY. 
and you know the formula of k now what is the formula of k 700 divided by what 0.87 into fy plus 1100 you can use this formula and then you can give me the actual limiting if you use this how much are getting this k you'll get 0 0.87 into 0.87 into fy plus 1100 then whatever I am getting 700 I will divide from that I will get 0 0.443 I am getting how much K is 0 0.443 46 suppose let us you know accurate value <laughs> into D is 450 right so if you multiply this you are getting almost how much you are getting almost almost 199.6 mm yes getting how much 199.6 mm so the value of K you remember for what you remember for this T still, right? For FE250, for 415, for 500. But they might ask you, you know, they might ask you some other grade also. Okay, they might ask you some other grade also, right? They might ask, you know, FE600 uh, or FE, you know, uh, 700. Like this they can do. Now, how many grades you will remember, right? So, for that, what you do? You remember this formula also. Remember the formula also, right? Very good. Now, the last question is a homework for you. Yes, you try it yourself, okay? Last question is homework for you and the answer you will post in the comment section, okay? That is your homework for you, okay? Please do the homeworks very sincerely. I am giving you a lot of homeworks. Do the homeworks very sincerely. So, hope you all enjoyed this lecture. If you like the lecture, okay, please mention the comment section that how you like the RCC, okay? And today we solved all the, you can say, commonly asked numericals of what? Your singly reinforced beam in singly reinforced beam mostly they ask what find out x u x u limiting m o r m o r limiting h t limiting p t limiting and then you know what they will ask you find out the minimum area of steel maximum area of steel and all those things you remember and i am telling you again i am telling you again the approach of lengthy questions in rcc and steel will not going to help you when you are solving questions of rcc and steel you have to be smart. You don't have to be a pothi. Okay? I always use this term pothi. Pothi means what? Solving long, long questions. Designing, you know, RCC 10, 10 pages. Not required. Not required. If you are preparing for this kind of examinations, especially gate and ESC prelims, see, in ESC mains it might be required. Right? Many students tell that, sir, I require for ESC mains. Or you will reach ESC mains only if when you have crossed the ESC prelims stage. Right? Yes? So, first of all, take the objective approach, understand each thing, you know, nicely, then you can go for mains, right? Wasting time like this, you know, initially you have started studying, you know, RCC, suddenly you are solving so long, lengthy, lengthy questions. You have not understood what is XU, what is XU limiting, what is MOR, what is MOR limiting. You don't know how to, people don't know how to find out simple, you know, minimum area of steel and they are telling you are designing beam slab column. That is what? That is not a smart approach. So first understand the small, 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 small things. And then the, the over lengthy thing will become easy, right? Because the lengthy thing is a combination of small, small things. Yes. Thank you very much. So we'll come up with some more sessions on RCC steel and structure analysis. And uh, CPM part and building material also I'm going to start on this particular channel. Okay. So many students are telling that we need some building material. So we'll be coming up with uh, properties of cement, properties of concrete, timber, Okay, and then machinery structures, okay, and then CPM part also we'll see, okay, many, th many things we're going to start uh, gradually, I will start still such as also, and then we'll be studying such an analysis also, we'll start to what, determinacy, the intercess, ILD, okay, all the force and displacement methods, okay, and so all these things will be continuing, so, but I request that all the students, you know, to be very sincere in the classes, attend the classes very sincerely, and solve the homework and be very sincere in your lives. If you are sincere for the next three, four months, I can guarantee you that you will be immensely benefited by following this particular channel. Okay. So thank you very much. But tomorrow, tomorrow at 6 p.m., tomorrow at 6 p.m., we'll be solving 10 numericals on what? Your bio oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand. Now, we all know that BOD is a very important topic, very, very important. It's a very important topic as far as GATE and ESE are concerned. Therefore, we'll be solving 10 questions on BOD. So, please attend that 6 p.m. tomorrow on this particular channel, okay? 
same bootclub channel okay please uh, attend this session and we'll be solving a lot of questions thank you very much bye bye see you next time at this particular channel only bye bye